to share with you how to make a garden obelisk or a trellis. I've been watching um, and looking for a trellis to put in my garden because I'm looking for not only something to use that I can climb um, either annuals or perennials on, but I really wanted some height in the garden, uh, some visual interest in the summer as well as in the winter, and I actually wanted to define a space in my garden, being one of the ways an entry into the garden, so I'm actually building two obelisks. But when I went online to look at purchasing the obelisks and I wanted to buy a nice one, that was wood, a fair height, uh, they were quite expensive. And they were in the hundreds, some were around $500, and that's Canadian um, because I live in Ontario. So I thought that I would make my own obelisk and I was able to put together an obelisk quite easily and I didn't have to use a lot of tools, I didn't have to use a lot of power tools, um, I didn't have to do a lot of measuring with angles, etc. So I developed an easy way to be able to put together the obelisk and to be able to do it on my own without an extra pair of hands. But if you have an extra person there to help you, it certainly would be easier. So this is the method that I came up, it worked really well for me. One of the obelisks turned out beautiful, so I'm excited to make the second one, which I'm going to be showing you how to do that today. The first thing I did was I created some templates, and that was simply done with some spare wood. So I had some extra two by fours, and yes, I did cut it with my miter saw. I didn't use a, a power tool like a, uh, a chop saw or anything, in order to create a frame, because I needed something to hold the obelisk standing up while I was able to put the cross rails on. So that's the first template I made. The second template was the actual width. So the bottom of the obelisk, I wanted it to be the same because I was building two of them. So that's the second template that I built, which I will show you. And the wood that I bought basically consisted of four two by twos and these are thin, usually used for framing. And I bought a uh, eight one by twos. And those were for the cross beams going uh, across the trellis all the way up. And I bought four extra ones because I wanted to put one in the center of each side, purely as decoration. The other thing that I did was I wanted my obelisk to be eight feet tall. So I bought all my wood in eight foot lengths. That way I didn't have to cut uh, any additional wood that was not necessary. And lastly, one and most important tip that I will give you is to use exterior paint when you're painting your obelisk if it's going outside or exterior stain. But if you're going to stain and paint, which you need to do because this wood is not pre-treated, it's just simple pine wood, do your painting prior to building the obelisk. You will save yourself a huge headache, lots of extra time, and it really will be painstaking if you build the obelisk and then try to paint it afterwards, unless you're spray painting. But even then, it becomes a little bit cumbersome. So it was just easy to paint everything in advance. I've got all my wood ready to go, and I'm ready to start building the obelisk. So, let's so the tools we're gonna to need for this project, it's going to be a hammer, some finishing nails, we're going to need a miter box, uh, a couple of pencils, and I've got a white one because my obelisk is going to be painted black. We're going to need some deck screws, and they are one and a quarter inches. We need a drill bit to fit the screw, uh, a bit to screw in the screw through our obelisk, a little bit of sandpaper, our drill, a measuring tape, we're going to need a square, and we're going to need a level, and of course, we're going to need our wood and a topper. And for my obelisk, I bought these wooden, they're the tops of fence posts. I've got a six by six, a four by four, and then this is just a round ball which fits the top of a fence post, and this is going to be my decorative topper.
So let so, me take this outside and I'll show you exactly what I did. So the first thing you want to do is get your scrap 2x4 and I've cut four pieces at 65 centimeters in length. And then you want to create a box by staggering. about 26 inches in length. I want 24 inches on the inside of the box. Mark this so I know where to screw right in the middle of this board without missing it. A little extra piece of wood drill on. It is square. Next, you want to make a template, but you want the inside measurement here to be 23 and 3 quarters, giving yourself an eighth of an inch on either side to fit into the frame. So all you do, and this is just one by three, like so. Measure it off 23 and 3 quarters. And then just nail two little pieces on either side so that you take our 2 by 2. Put it on the inside. They're lined up here and then at the top and it's secured on top with their elastic band. We have it lined up in our template. Then we're going to take our 2 by 4 just put it across, lining it up on the bottom. Making our mark on the top. So this is going to be the bottom. Of where the first rail is going to go. By twos, all painted. I'm going to move these off to the side. And I'm going to place it where the white lines are. Then I'm going to take my white pencil. And I'm going to score it from underneath. Marking the angle. So when I turn it around, I've got my line. I'm going to take three little pieces of wood sandwich. The one I'm going to cut between these two. And then take this one, put it on the angle, and cut along it. So then I've got my perfect angle cut. I'll do it to the other side. The angle is on the opposite direction. Frame it like this. 
add my little piece. So that's my first piece. Two sides are perfect. And I've got my two perfect angles. So it's flush here and it's flush on the other side. So I'm just going to pre-drill. got our first rib and now we want to do our first one from the top. I've just used this thick elastic holds it in place and you want this to be perfectly lined up. The bottom is secure and then we're going to measure 10 inches down and that's where the next rail will be. We flipped it over. We've already got our angle cut from the last one. And then we'll just sit it on top of the lines. Make sure it's all lined up evenly. Important to line up the first two rails because then everything else in between will just fit into place. And then you're just gonna score it underneath. Here's the line, we're gonna cut that spare piece of wood to sandwich our board in between and take our third one and to cut the angle nice and sharp. There we go. We have our little piece. So it's on our mark lines. The angle is perfect on both sides. Our rails are gonna be 16 inches from the bottom up. So I've just cut a little piece of wood that's 16 inches and this will be my guide. So it'll be very easy to lay it down. One mark there. One mark there. So I've just flipped it around and I've got my angle from the last cut. I sit it on top. Got it sitting on both my marks at 16 inches. It's nice and flush. I take my pencil. Mark the angle. I've got my angle on that side, my angle on this side. Now we're going to do the exact same thing again. So then we've got the line for the first rib and we're just going to line it up here. This is flush. Got our one and a half screw. Now we've got 
got our first rib. And now we are going to add the top rib. I've already got that angle from the last piece I cut. And we're just going to measure down 10 inches. So this chipped off a little bit, but I've just sanded down the corners and we can touch that up with paint at the end. We're going to take our piece, line it up under those two angles. Make sure it's flush on both sides. And then we're going to screw that down. We've got our bottom rib and our top rib. We want to take our lattice that we've already made and we are going to line it up. Make sure it's lined up perfectly. And this is the time to check because we're going to have to join these two together. So we want to make sure these are lined up and it's perfectly lined up. And we're going to make sure it's lined up on the bottom as well. Actually, this is off. So I'm going to actually move this up a bit because some of these boards are a little crooked. They might not be 100%, but this is the time to double check. So I'm just going to move this slightly up. So I'm going to take my little 16 inch measuring stick and apply it to this side. And now I can make my mark. All I have to do is line up the rib with this and with that one. So I've taken my next angle, lined it up in the center, and then lined it up with my measurement on the outside and scored it underneath, and this is what I will do. So I've lined it up here, matched it. These are the two pieces. I've cut my angle. I'm using my spacer on the outside flush with here to make sure that this is going to match this piece. And now I can screw it in. First drill, then screw it in. Do the same to the next rib. I'm going to measure the outside, make sure it is equal to this side. Now we have our two panels, which are perfectly lined up, all the rails. And the rails are going to be on the outside, so we're going to flip this one over. So the rails are inset, and we're going to put this one on top. And all the rails should line up perfectly. Then we're going to take our elastic. Maybe you need two elastics. This is basically going to hold our top together. And now we're going to take this over to our bottom frame. And open it up there. Just some tension spacers.
So you can see the raw ends are here. I'm going to take my next rib. I'm going to just stir it in the middle just to give me a little extra security. And I'm going to make my line. And I'm going to cut this and I'll be able to touch one here. I'll do it to the other side and that should hold it more square. Chester, are you helping me? There's the little helper. Correction, we're using one and a half inch deck screws. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this side as we did on the other side. These strips are too long, so I'm just gonna take a rough measurement and just cut it off a little bit shorter so that I can work with it. So I'm just going to cut it to there, it's more manageable. So we have our rough edges. I'm going to line it up there. Well, actually, we're going to overlap it. And I'm going to draw my angle from behind. There are the angles. So I can take that and that line's right. It was just a hair smaller. Sometimes the thickness of the pencil gives you too much. Better take a little extra time just to make sure things line up nicely. That's perfect. Perfect. Oops. Just loosen my tension rod. these little ends I'll sand after and I'll just touch these up with a little black paint it's gonna be outside there's lines on it it's not a big deal initially we used the 2x4 to measure up and mark the bottom of the first slot and that's why because our frame is a 2x4 and I wanted to make sure that the bottom slot was above it. The other side should make it very strong. I don't need the tension rod anymore because I've got my bottom slot in. Last piece. good. Now we're going to take our topper. We're going to sit it on top until it's level. Then I'm going to add this little piece of wood underneath and I'm going to mark it all the way around to make it square. So we have our piece of wood flat on the top and then we're just going to take this as a measurement and mark the line across. I'm going to do that all the way around. There's one of the obelisks. Here's the other one. We're just going to cut off the top to make just sure to it's create small. the measurement. And then we're going to do that and do that all the way 
going all the way around. This will be perfectly flat, so I'm going to be very careful to follow this top line and the side line. So I want to make sure that I really take my time. And for this, I like to use a little piece of wood as a guide to hold it in place. And that just gets my line going. And the pieces that I've cut off are all different angles, but this will be perfectly flat and I'll be able to put my topper on it. Good. Well, it's not 100%, but I think it's good enough. And now I'm just going to position this in the middle. Eyeball it. It's in the center. I'm going to pre-drill. Just kind of estimating where the four screws. So I'll just drill these four. Oops, that's nothing. So originally I was going to use two, but I think I'm just going to use the one. I'm going to use the um, the six by six because I think it's more in scale. I've just drawn a little square, so I know where to position my screws and then I'm just going to get it started. Nice. And two more. And I'm just going to go from corner to corner. a little X. I might need a bigger drill bit, but let's see how it goes. This has a screw nail already on it. So at the feet, I've just added these little um, eyelet holes. You screw them in. And then I'm gonna take some long nails and uh, I'll be able to secure this to the ground if I decide to put it on the ground. fantastic. Congratulating myself. I think it's a fantastic job. It looks great. But I think I need to paint the underside. So just for decoration, my extra pieces, I'm going to add these are 70 inches long. I'm just going to attach it here, 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 and here as a final decoration. I think that will look nice. And I'm just 
eyeballing it in the center, but you can measure it out. And for this, we need the one and one quarter screws. And Chester, are you okay? Are you okay? If you don't pre-drill, it will crack the wood. 